Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and, and on earth, earth peace and goodwill, goodwill towards, towards men. men. We, we praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes the way of the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Peace be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of thy name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The lesson from the epistle of blessed Paul the Apostle to the Romans. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness, and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things, whereof ye are not ashamed? For the end of those things is death, but now being made from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the epistle. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the 8th chapter of St. Mark, 
beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The multitude being very great, and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and said unto them, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way, for divers of them came from far. And his disciples answered him, From whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and break, and gave to his disciples to set before them. And they did set them before the people. And they had a few small fishes. And he blessed and commanded them to be set also before them. So they did eat and were filled. And when they took up the broken meat that was left in the seven baskets, and they that had eaten were about four thousand, and he sent them away. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and in the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the, for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Word reached me this week, near the end of the week, the passing of one of our parishioners here. Actually, to say that he was a parishioner, he was a clergyman. That was Canon Charles Schlegel. Now, Canon Schlegel had been here, oh, just a few months before I came into this diocese. And when I came here to All Saints and began to serve here at this parish, he and his wife, Betty, were always there in the, in the front pews. He acquired a very rare and debilitating disease, which slowly took parts of him, strength, the ability to even, even use some of his, his hands, Father Kent Haley once told of a woman who also was in the process of 
of meeting her maker, for lack of a better term. <laughs> but as she was going, she had losing, she had lost her ear, eyesight. She had was losing her hearing. She couldn't walk anymore. And she said to Father Haley, well, you know what that is what life is all about, is that God asks us to surrender. And so little by little, we have to surrender things. And it may be our hands, maybe our, our senses, our hearing, our smelling, our seeing. But eventually we will have to surrender all to God. And so this last Friday, I'm sorry, Thursday, Canon Slagle did the final surrender to God and has entered his loving presence. And so this week I ask for your prayers for him, for his family, for his wife, Betty. Now, one thing that Ken Schlegel and I talked about once is that we were talking about food and everything that happens with the, with the social work, if you will, the community of the faithful coming together, not just for prayer, but also to break bread, to, to eat. And he said he never used the word potluck. That just, just sounded like, well, well, that's just, it just, he preferred to call it a parish meal. We will have a parish meal together. And we see through scripture, we see in the works of Jesus, we see that food is very important. He was often sitting down with his disciples. He was often eating with sinners, with publicans. He was also sitting with the righteous Pharisees. That Christ was there in those meals. It's one of the things we always pray, and you should be praying grace before meals. Grace to ask God to be there to bless the food which he has given us, that we receive gratefully and graciously. So food is very important in scripture. And here we have in a parable today in the gospel reading, another great feeding. Now you notice that the people have been gathered out in the wilderness, out away from the villages, as it says, they came from afar. And there was no place to eat between where they were and going back to their homes. And so they had been there for three days. What food they had was probably getting very limited, if not consumed at all. And so they were beginning to be restless. They couldn't pay attention. And yet they were there, still there. And Jesus was preaching to them and teaching. And that's really what is a foreshadowing of Holy Communion, of the way that our services are structured. is that we begin 
with the, what is sometimes described as the liturgy of the word, the work of the church in reading of scripture, in having a collection of our thoughts together in prayer, in reciting the statement of our belief, and in hearing the humble words from whoever God has deigned to preach, to stand in the place of Christ, to try to unfold scripture. And so we have this liturgy of the word. Then as it happened, in that feeding of the 4,000. Then there was a holy meal, a mystical meal, a meal which could not be accounted for out of seven loaves of bread feeding 4,000 people. That's a miracle. It is a, it is a parish meal. The faithful, hearing the word of God. Hearing the word, not just the written scripture, but from the mouth of God himself through Jesus Christ. And then a holy meal. This day when we cannot partake because of the restrictions of the civil authorities. We cannot partake of this meal. In fact, we can do it in a spiritual way. Because by God's promise, he will feed us. And so in this service, which we will now proceed, it will be the preparation of that spiritual meal. The reality of Christ being with us, of the same power, the same godly presence, which changed seven loaves and a few fishes into an overabundance that bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Christ by God's power. And in that mystical sense, while you're at home, because of this separation at this time, pray, pray to be spiritually fed by this same bread from heaven. And so I ask that you join us and continue in this parish meal, which is be brought and set before you. I bring you this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Like as in the burnt offerings of rams and bullocks, and like as the ten thousand of fat lambs, so let our sacrifice be in thy sight this day, that it may please thee. For they shall not be confounded that put their trust in thee, O Lord. The holy sacrifice is offered today to the glory of God for his holy church and for this parish. And ask your prayers for the sick and infirmed of this parish, for our friends and loved ones who are in need of comfort, of companionship, who are feeling alone in this time. That our Lord may give his loving presence 
to those who seek him and those who do not know him, that they may find that peace which passeth understanding. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of thy hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also, so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, Comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And especially we pray for Tess, Joy, Lionel, Marilyn, Elizabeth, Mar Michael, Marianne. Jenny, Juliet, Costanzo, Constanzio, Priest, Martha, Ronnie, Mary Ellen, Aubrey, Derek, Emma, Jerry, Adona, Joan, Pauline, Dan, Laura, Jeffrey, and Linda, and all those who we keep in the secret of our hearts. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants depart this life in thy faith and fear, especially remembering this your servant, Charles. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. He who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and our love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith. Take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession unto Almighty God, devoutly kneeling.
Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins unto all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ said unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and are bound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and in institute and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death, and sacrifice until his coming again from the night in which he was betrayed he took bread and when he'd given thanks he break it he gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me.
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these, thy holy gifts, which we now offer to thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. Remember, Lord, also the souls of thy servants and handmaidens, which are gone before us with the mark of faith and rest in the sleep of peace, especially to remember today Charles, the priest. We beseech thee, O Lord, that unto them and unto all as such as rest in Christ, thou wilt grant a place of refreshing, of light, and of peace, and vouchsafe to give unto us some portion in fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, and with all thy saints, within whose fellowship we beseech thee to admit us. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen.
Let us pray. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. World without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come, come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. I will receive the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for me to preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was shed for me to preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak word only, and my soul shall be healed. body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life.
pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for the doubts about safe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and just to show us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And, and we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so, so to assist us with thy grace, that, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Blessed, praised, worshiped, and adored be our Lord Jesus Christ upon his throne in heaven, in the most holy sacrament of the altar, and in the hearts of his faithful people. Amen. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And may that perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Amen.